All right, we're going to call this meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Padilla, would you like to come on up? Right. Yeah. Okay. Madam Secretary, please establish a quorum. Fuentes. Here. Duval. Berry Hill. Here. Buchanan. Carter. Fong. Here. Fuller. Furutani. Huffman. Krikorian. Skinner. Fletcher. Swanson. Tarico. Valines. Duval. Here, 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 here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Great, thank you. Before we begin, I have a couple of announcements. Assemblymember Blakesley will be permanently replaced by Assemblymember Valines. Welcome aboard, Mr. Valines. Permanently. Permanently. Assemblymember Smythe will be replaced by Assemblymember Fletcher for today's hearing, unfortunately, just for today, Mr. Fletcher. Assemblymember Buchanan is absent today. There is no replacement. Uh, SB 488 Pavley and SB 695 Kehoe have been pulled from today's file. Um, bills will be heard and signed in order. Actually, we're going to go ahead with Mr. Padilla first. Mr. Padilla, welcome. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Uh, just by way of background, in, uh, in 2007, former President Bush signed the Energy Independence and Security Act that provided $500 million for smart grid demonstration projects and matching grants throughout the country. And as most of us know, earlier this year, President Obama signed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act that includes $4.5 billion for smart grid investment. So clearly this isn't a partisan issue. Both Republicans and Democrats agree that we can't hope to meet tomorrow's energy challenges with the technology of the past. Uh, this bill would uh, do a couple of things. It would establish smart grid deployment as the policy of the state. It calls on the PUC to determine the requirement for the, a smart grid deployment plan by July of next year. It would require utilities, uh, investor owned utilities, to develop and submit a smart grid deployment plan to the PUC by July of 2011. And it would also require municipal utilities to develop smart grid deployment plans as well. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that uh, there are some proposed amendments to SB 17 that were presented to my office this morning but are not reflected in the analysis. I'm uh, happy to consider the proposed amendments, but I uh, have to confess I'm not prepared to accept those today. I commit to working with the committee members, committee staff, uh, and stakeholders to sort of evaluate those new recommendations as the bill goes forward. Thank you, Mr. Pania. Uh, witnesses in support? Good afternoon. Alicia Priego on behalf of the Public Utilities Commission testifying in support of the bill. As the Senator said, his bill is promoting efforts at the federal level and is in alignment with what uh, uh, efforts underway at the Commission. Hi, I'm Pete Hernandez with AT&T. And AT&T is here to support SB 17. The company supports the vision behind smart grid deployment that will help California reduce power consumption, increase efficiency and reliability, and pave the way to alternative energy sources. We support Senator Padilla's approach of being the electric uh, utilities the ability to develop plans that can use a variety of products, technologies, and services that will meet their unique needs and strategies and benefit California. Thank you. Mr. Chair and members, Jim DeBoo on behalf of the City of Los Angeles in support. Thank you. My name is Catherine Brandenburg with the Flanagan Law Firm representing Sierra Pacific Power Company. We're a Nevada-based utility, a multi-jurisdictional utility, and we um, are working with the Senator in getting an amendment so that any utility below 100,000 customers um, would not be subjected to this um, rule, that they could use uh, the program that they have existing in their uh, main base, which would be Nevada. Thank you. Great, thank you. Any additional witnesses in support? How about witnesses? Oh, here we go. We got more. Kelly Boyd on behalf of Southern California Edison in support. Great, thank you. Additional witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Seeing no witnesses, members, any uh, questions for the author? Very good. The bill's been moved and seconded. Madam Secretary, please. Oh, Mr. Padilla, would you like to close? Ask for I vote. Very good. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Fuentes. Aye. Fuentes, aye. Duval. Aye. Duval, aye. Berry Hill. Aye. Berry Hill, aye. Carter. Aye. Carter, aye. Fong. Aye. 
Fong I. Fowler, Furutani, Huffman, Krikorian, Skinner, Fletcher, Fletcher I. Swanson, Swanson I. Tariko, Tariko I. Valines, Valines I. And look how easy that was. Very good. That bill is out uh, as uh, due pass. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership, Mr. Chair. My pleasure. Uh, all right. Any uh, witnesses, uh, rather, any authors? Calling all authors. Very good. They're on their way. Mr. Chair, I have a question on that. It seemed like uh, the Republicans have stepped up the dress code around here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the memo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My goodness. <laughs> These guys look good. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, man. <laughs> so we got to learn about it. Motion to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. It was like a really serious trans committee meeting, right? And all the people in the audience were all freaking out that I was so cad, I had no tie on. I said it's Valentine's. Frivolity is appropriate with all of our budget difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Samidian, you're the next uh, author on the Utilities and Commerce Committee agenda. How are you today, good sir? All right, members, let's get it together here. Mr. Samidian, the floor is yours. You're presenting on SB 176, Electricity Charges Charitable Organizations. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members. Uh, SB 176 simply extends by five years the sunset provisions of... Move the bill. I, I believe Assembly Member Duval has been more eloquent than I ever possibly could be, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Mr. Semidia. But Mr. Duval, my Vice Chair failed to notice that there are no additional authors here, so we can uh, oh. 
I, we're happy to hear all about your bill, Mr. Oh, Simidian. Or not. <laughs> the bill's been moved and seconded. Any witnesses in support of the bill? Any witnesses in opposition to the bill? Seeing and, he seeing and hearing none, Mr. Simidian, would you like to close on your bill? Respectfully request an aye vote. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Fuentes? Aye. Fuentes, aye. Duval? Aye. Duval, aye. Barry Hill? Aye. Barry Hill, aye. Carter? Aye. Carter, aye. Fong? Aye. Fong, aye. Fuller? Furutani? Huffman? Krikorian? Skinner? Fletcher? Aye. Fletcher, aye. Swanson? Swanson, aye. Swanson, aye. Tirico? Valines? Valines, aye. Very good. That bill was due pass. Uh, recommend consent. The bill is out. Thank you, Mr. Simidian. Thank you very much, Have a Mr. Great Chairman day. and members. Very good. Senator Leno, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Sorry to keep you. All righty, members, if we can have a little order here, the good senator has made it down to present his bill. Senate Bill 581. Go ahead, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, a couple years ago, I authored Bill AB 2573, which enables solar distributed generation to serve the city's municipal electrical load. So we have for example, on the west side of town, some acres and acres of rooftop reservoirs, which of course have no load themselves, they're just reservoirs. And we wanted to be able to install solar on that site and to be able to get credit from PG&E. And of course, we have a unique relationship with PG&E as a result of the Raker Act, which goes back to 1913. Of course, San Francisco is a producer of electricity with our hydropower at Hetch Hetchy. So we wanted to be able to put solar panels there. <coughs> in fact, we're planning to do uh, one of the largest in the country, a multi-megawatt installation on one of these sites. Uh, and because of 2573, we're able to do that. So we will uh, put the energy into the grid at the time when there's a new municipal load. Let's say we build a new schoolhouse. Uh, we need power there. We can get the power then from PG&E at that time. We pay all, we, the uh, San Francisco PUC pays for distribution and transmission, any upgrades to the system, so there's no risk to the uh, ratepayer whatsoever. We want to expand that allowance that 2573 presented for solar to all renewables, and that's what this bill does. The good news I bring you today is that we have reached agreement with PG&E, and I thank them for working with us. So we have a, an amendment that I'm uh, told your committee is familiar with, which then uh, brings PG&E to neutrality. It had to do with a 20-mile limit. Very good. Any witnesses in support? 
Hello, my name is Bart Broom. I'm with the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission, and uh, I think that at this point, with uh, PG&E in in uh, a neutral position, and and thanks to the help of the uh, committee staff, uh, we were able to get to that point. Uh, basically, I would just ask for you to support this very important renewable energy bill that applies only to the city and county of San Francisco. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Additional witnesses? Yeah, Brett Barrow, San, uh, California Municipal Utilities Association. We are here in strong support of this. We think that uh, San, San Francisco needs the options to uh, uh, further reach their AB 32 goals as well as their renewable goals, and I think this bill goes a long way to do that, and, and we are in strong support of this measure. So thank you. Very good. Uh, additional witnesses, I guess, in neutral position? Or in opposition? Keep me an honest man. <laughs> uh, Kent Kaus with pg and &E, uh, just confirming we have removed our opposition with the amendments and want to thank the author and committee staff for helping us reach this point. Great, thank you. Thank Any you. additional witnesses in support or in opposition? Seeing none, just to, for the record here, uh, page four, lines four through six, reinstate current law. The amendment is where the separate or remote sites are outside of the city and the county of San Francisco, they shall be located within 20 miles of the city and county of San Francisco or within 20 miles of HHWP, remote solar generation facility. Is that right? Remote renewable. Remote renewable. Very good. Re re remote renewable, right. Very good. That's key there. Yes. And that's Hetch Hetchy Hetch Water, Hetch -Hetchy and water power. power. Very good. Yes. Right. That is the amendment. Members uh, looking for a motion to uh, move the bill? Very good. In a second? Mr. Fong seconds it. Um, seeing no uh, comments, uh, Mr. Duvall. Yeah, I have a couple of questions, please. Um, Mr. Leno, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, Mr. Um, I have four questions. I'm looking at the response from the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission response to the uh, floor alert for, from PG&E. Um, I noticed that uh, the, in the original agreement, it's the 20-mile radius, and I, I'm trying to de figure out what you just said on the amendments. I, just, I don't have them. You just read them to me. Does that mean that if anything were going to happen before this, this 2015 date, that if you have a project that's already being worked on, that that isn't even going to be hooked into the system until after 2015? That's my understanding. Uh, we currently don't have a project that would meet these criteria under construction now. So um, it becomes a moot point. It becomes a moot point. And basically what the amendments do is they restore what is in currently in statute regarding the 20-mile limit. So basically what it means is that we can locate generation um, within the city and county of San Francisco or within 20 miles of the borders of the city and county of San Francisco or within 20 miles of our load. Um, and we have a, a, a number of locations such as water treatment plants and a variety of other infrastructure where we have electrical load outside of our city. So you, basically you'll be using the transmission lines that you're already using because you can hook into them because you're close. Right. Okay. Okay. The other thing is, um, and again, we are paying for all transmission <coughs> and dis distribution and at whatever the cost is going to be bared because at the eight cents per per um, the current eight cents is not going to be enough if you're out. I don't know how many if you're if if you're doing all this within twenty miles. I keep thinking you're going to move it to where like the solar might be in the desert and you need transmission lines all the way from the desert to San Francisco. Well, Just, we, we don't have any property in the desert anyway, but well, yeah. we could. It says we could any find property stuff. you may lease or own. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can go out and buy anything. A couple clarifications. That's a 0.8 cent per kilowatt hour discount off of the otherwise applicable transmission rate. It's not okay. eight cents. Okay. And then it has to be within pg and &E service territory, so you couldn't go to the desert. Um, while today they don't have any plans for anything beyond 20, if they were to go beyond 20, let's say two years from now they find a facility they want to go to, that would be negotiated under a wholesale distribution tariff or some other mechanism. But this bill this is bill. left unaffected by that. Okay. I have another question on the amount that, you know, currently you guys allow them to bank up some of their money from the hydro That doesn't plant change right either. Now. And that doesn't change. So it's still going to be the 110 um, megawatts and that's going to be, and that's all you're going to be able to store. So. Are you guys all right with that too then? Yeah, I don't know what that I mean, 110 is, but yeah, well, the banking you have, what arrangements it says are not. Is, the, is that the IA is already approved with PG&E allows the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission to bank up to 110 you know, megawatts during peak production, like when the snows melts and all that. Mm -hmm. So you guys bank 110. It's not going to change that <laughs> ability, okay? Correct. Okay, well. But you know, with the result of this bill becoming law, we'll have a greater opportunity for a more diverse portfolio. 
okay. within that 100 chip. Well, because of that, because of the amendments, I'm going from an opposed to a, a, a neutral on this. So I'm not going to, I'm going to um, lay off right now, but it got me from an opposed to a neutral. So I don't want to push it too far. That's okay. pretty good. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Very good. Thank you, Vice Chair Duvall. And any additional questions or concerns, members? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Leno, would you like to close? Uh, on behalf of uh, any future solar, wind, a small hydro, and then we're going to be developing ocean power off the coast of San Francisco very soon, too. So we'll be able to do that with your help today. I ask for your eye vote. Oh, great. Thank you. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Fuentes. Aye. Fuentes, aye. Duval. Yeah. Berry Hill. Aye. Berry Hill, aye. Carter. Aye. Carter, aye. Fong. Aye. Fong, aye. Fuller. Aye. Fuller, aye. Furitani. Huffman. Krikorian. Aye. Krikorian, aye. Skinner. Fletcher. Fletcher, I. Swanson. Swanson, I. Swanson, I. Tarico. Belines. Belines, I. Very good. That bill is out uh, as amended to Natural Resources Committee. Thank you, Mr. Leno. Thank you all very much. All righty. Very good. We're going to leave the roll open for an additional seven minutes uh, for uh, the absent members who are willing to uh, be present and vote. Thank you, members. Thank you.